Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to look at some Paul Rubin's tubes of watercolor that they sent over to me. So I wanted to do a little unboxing. This is nice and bubble wrapped, which is always a good sign. And I thought it would be good to unbox it for you guys. Just so that you could see the gorgeous packaging that it comes in. And then I will swatch these probably um, so that you guys can kind of see how they perform. Now they will be fresh from the tube. Let's see if I can find a... Ooh, that plastic's going to catch my reflection and I am not camera ready. <laughs> Alright, so let's open these. Absolutely love, love the new packaging, by the way. Look at this. Beautiful artwork. Okay, so it looks like this is a sleeve. So let's slide that out. And then we've got this nice sturdy box. Look at that. I'm going to totally butcher that if I try to say it. Gukai? Yep, I, I did. Okay, so we pull off the top. And then we have a pamphlet talking about their watercolors. Now it is, is saying the 24 classic colors. Um, of course, it is not in English, but hey, Google Translate. All right, we've got a thin layer of foam, and then here are the tubes. These are beautiful. I, I'm really digging this black, shiny packaging, and these are 12 ml tubes. That's actually a really generous tube uh, if you want a comparison. Um, this is a Windsor & Newton 5 ml um, not cheap. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> so just so you know, that's actually a big beefy one. Um, I even have a Daniel Smith uh, 5 ml. So just so you can see what I mean, 12 mls is actually quite a lot of paint. Now, none of this is in English. It looks like they had a light fast rating. I am going to look and see if I can find pigment info because it says they're using traditional Chinese painting pigments. Let me check the back real quick. Nope, nothing on the back there. So I'll have to check their website because I want to know the pigments in here, um, obviously. But it, I'm going to guess that they actually are sharing the pigment info on the back. Now I'm probably going to get hit depending on how full these are. <laughs> nope, so far I don't feel it squishing out. So there we go. We've got the uh, aluminum whatchamacallit, so that's a good sign always. I worry when I like feel like a plasticky um, cheap tubing, but this is actually really well constructed, better than the Arteza ones. Um, so yeah, what I think I'll do, oh, this looks like a, I wonder if that's a, a metallic one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my swatch book. Now, if you're gonna swatch along with me or you wanna know what I'm using, I will be leaving links in the description below to this. I believe there's a coupon code going on right now for these, but don't quote me on that. Um, and then I'm gonna be using my Etcher cold press. I do all my swatches in here. That's just because this is what I use for most of my paintings, so I feel it's best to use that. However, they also sent a watercolor block. I will use the block for a demonstration, but for swatching purposes, I'm going to put these in here. So I think what I plan to do is prep my swatch surface and then I'll do a sped up version of the swatching just so you guys aren't watching me swatch real time and then we'll come back and demo. Okay, so I tried to Google Translate and I just started giving up. So I'm going to ignore the names and just swatch. Um, I did want to note though that there was two tubes I could not use. So this one here, again, I don't have names for these. Um, and where did this one fall? Number four, I think, Brielgar? I'm not sure. It's, it's completely dried up. I can't get it out of there. I was trying. <laughs> um, and also, when you open it, it gave off this very, very um, strong chemical odor. Uh, like so strong that I had to air out my office for a minute. It was, I was, I'm not normally that sensitive to smells. Uh, in fact, some of it's getting on my hand. Um, <laughs> but 
Uh, and then there was this color as well. Again, I don't know the names. I gave up on the Google translations because they just weren't, um, yeah, some of them were coming off really weird. Even the pigments were. About the only one I can guarantee is titanium white. <laughs> Um, this was also dried up, so I couldn't get that tube, uh, anything out of it. So I will be 22 instead of 24. So now I am going to speed this up. I will make some comments as I go along. I do have all the colors on my little Medine palette. I'll link that in the description below as well, in case you're curious. Um, I just put them out here, uh, so that it's easier for me to do painting later. So let's swatch these colors. Um in sped up time and then we will play with them in just a second. Okay, so we have them all swatched out. I left, I think these are the two that were dried up and I couldn't use. <laughs> um, and I was playing around with a few, adding a little extra water just to kind of see if they would granulate at all. Like I said, translating the pigments um, wasn't working out too well. Um, now these are still wet, they're working on drying. So we'll look at it again after they dry. Uh, they. They work really well, you just have to remember if you're coming straight from a tube, they're going to be really strong, heavily pigmented, as opposed to, you know, coming out of pan or if you dried them overnight. So you got to kind of, you know, give a little leeway there, but gosh, this color is gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, and it does granulate. Um, I, that's why I had added extra water. And then this purple is freaking lush, oh my. <laughs> so. Um, the colors so far aren't too bad. I did notice a few felt pretty um, opaque to me, and as they're drying, they still look pretty opaque. Again, they're out of a tube fresh. Might get a different result. Of course, titanium white you always expect to be a little bit more opaque, uh, but like this, what I think is vermilion and possibly brick, um, those are pretty, uh, pretty strong colors. Um, this color here is oh, lovely too. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint a little bit. Now, I'm going to be using the cold pressed watercolor book. Now, I've gotta say Paul Rubens is not really doing themselves any favors by calling it a watercolor book because it is actually a block. <laughs> so that is where they really need to change the name of that. So this is really cool. It is um, cold pressed, which is my style of watercolor, and I believe online it said 104 or uh, 300 GSM. Does it say it on here? It doesn't say. But this is a watercolor block, so it is glued down. You will need a palette knife or a little exacto blade. But this means you can paint on this, use as much water as you want, and you don't have to like tape it down, worry about buckling. Um, and this is a really good price, so I'm excited to play with this paper. Um, I think we'll do just kind of a quick little you know, floral play with the colors I've got. Um, I need to mix myself up a pink. Actually, I might just water down one of these and make it a pink. But, I'm gonna get this ready to go and then we'll do some painting and see how these perform. 
Okay, so I got that little uh, sample piece off, um, very well glued, I must say. I couldn't find my palette knife, so I had to use an X-Acto knife. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I think I'm going to go landscape, but this has plenty of hills and valleys. Feels like a good, a nice paper. Now, I don't know if it's 100% cotton. It doesn't feel like it, but I'm not going to be quoted on that. I will leave a link in the description below and confirm or deny <laughs> later. Um, it doesn't feel cottony. All right, so let's see how the paints do on, I want this rouge color, but I need to water it down to get, get some luscious color there. Oh, this is such a lovely color. I'm just using a number, um, I think size 10, silver black velvet. And really, I'm just doing a little bit of play here. Loose water color, because that is my preferred style. Of course, I seem to be picking fall-like <sighs> colors at the moment, and it is definitely not fall. But the these two colors just really spoke to me. I'm just doing some really sloppy roses right now. Just want to see how the paper absorbs. I like it. Let's grab some of this blue that I liked so much. I'm gonna mix it up with a little bit of this rouge color, I think is what it's called. Mm. I need a little more. I just want to see what kind of purple it can make. It might not be. Oh well, yeah, it's still pretty good. I must say, oh, look at that luscious purple right there. Oh, I like that purple. I just mixed uh, rouge with that, what I want to call indigo, but I don't know if that's really what it is. <laughs> um, so you can even go back in with a little water if you want to kind of play around with it. Let's grab, I think, what was it, emerald, or something that looked like an emerald green. It's really bright though, so I'm going to tone it down a little. I'm going to add a tiny bit of this purple to it. Let's see if I can tone it down. Mm. More like a tealish deep green. There we go. Okay. moment I am just playing like I literally got no plan here whatsoever so don't take this as a hey how to paint tutorial because I am just testing this paper seeing how well it holds to the water how well the colors grip onto it because that is always important Ooh, I like this color though soaking up pretty well because I'm noticing my brush is releasing a little bit sooner than I would like. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get more water. I still don't think it's cotton. But hey, I could be wrong. Let's add a little purple into our leaves. are in the way. I'm liking that mixture a lot better. I just want to see if I can get some of the colors to separate that looked like they were granulating. Again, I've got no info <laughs> on whether or not they granulate because it was all in 
Chinese, but the paints themselves aren't too bad. Let's get some of this. I'm honestly just playing around at this point. I want to see how it grips, how it moves. I really like that emerald green. It's just a little too bright and I gotta say if I was looking at this as a whole set I would love an olivey green. Can I make one? Of course. Um, but I'm gonna mix a little like I can mix this yellow <laughs> color and I have to refer to it as this yellow color because I don't really know what it's supposed to be. I'm just grabbing a little of this blue. Maybe make a few berries. Because why not? I just want to see what we get out of this. Okay. I'm going to add a little of my red as well. Oops, I have way too much water on my brush there. The magic of watercolor, you can soak it up, just dry off your brush. It's almost like a vacuum. Okay, and then I want to get this deeper green color going on. Mix it with a little of my blue. I'm sorry, I don't have enough room on my desk to bring you over here. I mean, it's like a hot, hot palette mess at the moment. You're probably like, what color is what? But I'm actually taking this uh, indigo-ish color and mixing it with this blue over here, or uh, green over here, slash purple, slash red. Just wanna see what I can create. I could say what these pigments were though because I really need when I mix with watercolors I want to know what the pigment is you know um, I'm playing with this blue for a second because I want to see if it granulates because see it's already my water is really dirty <laughs> paint buck can only hold on so long I just kind of want to play with the colors a little and just see what they do. So these are, let's talk about the, ooh, that mixes them very nicely. Um, so these are not open stock, so you would have to buy the entire set to replace what you need. Um, like I said, I'm gonna reach out to my contact at Paul Rubens. These blend really nicely. Um, and talk about the dried up tubes and that chemical smell on one. Yes, um, my water is now officially black, so is my wet wash, but I don't have a clean cup nearby. I just wanna see how, if we drop it in, what we get. Um, so I do need to reach out about the, the ones that were dried up, and then I need to reach out about that smell, because that chemical smell was really, I mean, it was a pretty strong odor. Um, and for those who are sensitive to that kind of stuff, you know, and plus I want to know what it's made out of that gave it that smell. <laughs> it's like, what's in here? So I'm going to reach out to them about those um, little concerns. But yeah, so like say I really wanted to know what those two colors were. Now, Paul Rubens does have really good customer support, so I, you could reach out to them, say, hey, I got two duds here, and they'll they'll either, they'll do something to make it right, because they're actually really responsive over there. Um, but, like, you know, say you run out of those two colors, you are going to have to go buy the whole 24-count set, um, so that's something to keep in mind. But look how much water I can put on this paper, and it's not moving at all because it's a block. Oh, I love it. I <laughs> love it, love it. Like, oh, they do granulate very nicely. Of course, 
I did mix colors together, but um, so let me grab that a little bit more of that purple and just kind of leave it on its own. I'm looking at the swatch on my etcher, and it did perform differently on my etcher, which is 100% cotton. Let me see about this one over here. Gosh, that color is luscious. Look at that color. Let me zoom you in a little so you can just see that color. I mean, look at that. That is a beautiful color. Oh, I love the way it moves on the paper. This was me mixing in those um, purples and blues here. I'm going to actually dry off my brush because I got a little puddling here which we don't want because that leaves big old water lines like that ugly one right there that we're going to erase and pretend didn't happen. See? Look at that. Whatever happened. But yeah, interesting. Um, so I made my own little granulation right there. <laughs> Fun. Um, these two blended really nicely. Look at that gorgeous blend. Um, now, something to keep in mind about watercolors is it really comes down to paper and paint is kind of at the end. Paper and brush are the primary um, things that determine the quality of a mix, um, how the paint performs. So that's something to keep in mind. I do notice I had not mixed this purple and it is looking a little chalky. Let's check my swatch though, because I added quite a bit of water to that my swatch is doing the same thing down so that's interesting um let me zoom you guys back out so i'm not but yeah i mean playing around with it having some fun got a messy palette that i can just throw in the dishwasher that's why i buy these <laughs> um so overall what do i think here um the paint like i said i had two duds so i really only got 22 colors this one stank whatever this color is um cool and i don't know if that's from it just drying up but i mean if i dry it up in uh you know if i squeeze these tubes because i don't actually use straight from the tube i put them in um palettes and half pans or full pans and dry them and use them later. So is that one going to stink like that? That's kind of something I'm curious about. Um, but yeah, so overall, these colors are quite lovely. Um, I, I would have really liked to know what the other two were, but potato, whatever. Uh, this is a gold, so it is a shimmery paint. Now again, this is my Etcher cold press, so it's 100% cotton. So you can see how it reacts on here versus their book. Uh, we do have some opaque colors in here. Um, this has got to be mixed with something to make it that way. I'm in love with this color. This, In fact, all three here, these two blues I'm in love with. Uh, over here, you get one yellow. Now, this color here... I couldn't even gather a guess, but I would say it's, it's kind of going to be an orangey yellow. Um, this yellow ochre seems kind of odd for a yellow ochre, but I'm, I'm loving these colors. Uh, I really do like these, uh, but this one is incredibly opaque, but it could also be pulling it from the tube. Um, in fact, I think that's this one over here. Let me just get a little more water and mix it off to the side. I just kind of want to see if it still feels pretty thick, but let's give it a minute. Same with this other one here. Oh, hi brush and camera. <laughs> My palette, I'm like literally running out of space here, but I'm trying to avoid making mud. Now that one is definitely going to stay opaque. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that one for sure, that one I think as well. Okay, I don't know what pigments are in those. Like I said, it was starting to... I think this vermilion is PR106, but I'm going to have to double check on that. Um, the scarlet, however, is gorgeous, and this other red is awesome too. I like this. Um, these browns aren't too shabby. Honestly, I could do without that one because I can make that. Um, this burnt sienna, I think is what it is, isn't too bad. So yeah, color wise, 
uh, I do feel like I'm missing more of a olivey green color. Um, it's, but it, this is a good palette you could mix off of for sure. Uh, but the problem is, is you know, you're getting hefty tubes, so it's going to take a while to run out. But again, no open stock. You don't have the pigment info, so you don't really know what we're playing with here. Um, but I'm hoping they will come out with something that kind of helps understand what each one is made out of. Um, they are using ancient Chinese pigments, so there's going to be, you know, some differences uh, compared to like what we're used to with Daniel Smith and whatnot. But this watercolor block, on the other hand, is amazing. Oh my gosh, it took all that water so well. It does have a tiny bit of a bubble here. I mean, it's only glued on the edges, y'all. It's not glued like in the center. So it's just glued here on the edge, but still. So it's bubbling right there a tiny bit, but it's held tight. And what you do is you wait for it to dry and then you slip your palette knife under and pull it up. Am I gonna frame this? No, because this is just a play around sheet. This color does indeed granulate and it is still wet. <laughs> the purple, it looks like it does not. So uh, just like in my swatch, yeah. So, but this one does and it's just very so slightly, but if I were to mix it with some colors, I could easily make myself a granulating color. Um, I do like how it performed on the paper, but yeah, I'm just not sure. This does not feel like cotton. So I'm gonna, I'm almost 100% sure 95% sure it's not cotton. So hopefully I can confirm that in the links below. But either way, it performs great whether it's cotton or not. It held up well. I like how it soaked in. Um, I liked that I could still lift up. And I do love the fact that... Well, that one's not moving. Um... I do love the fact that I can still come back in and soak up my color and how it's sitting into those grooves. So yeah, overall, I like the block. I actually might get another one and play around with it because blocks are expensive. I mean, have you ever looked at the Arches blocks? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you use those with care. Um, so if you have purchased these, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know. Overall, it's not a bad set. I just feel like there's a few things that need to be ironed out. Even if I didn't have these two duds, um, I need to know pigment information. Uh, I need to know what is my paints are made out of because are they toxic, non-toxic? Um, not that I'm going to lick them or anything, but for an environmental sake. Uh, but also, I need the pigment info so I know what I'm working with. Um, I mean, are these mixes? Are these pure pigments? You know, single pigment colors? So those are things that we all want to know as artists. Um, so that is one thing I have. And then the no open stock. Those are two red flags. But the paints do perform really well. Um, so yeah, you'll just have to let me know if you've purchased these and what your thoughts are. If you had some dried up tubes, I'd love to know too, so I can pass that along to the team. And I do love Paul Rubens. I have their glitter palette um, and then their other regular palette. And I love their paint colors. I, I love that they're kind of like rebranding and doing these gorgeous uh, gukai. I'm so butchering that. But these classical art ones with Chinese painting pigments. I really like that they're doing this. Um, I think that's going to make them very unique. But, you know, as uh, someone who reviews these products and shares it with you, I just want to make it clear of anything I noticed. And these were sent to me by the team, but I just feel honesty is the best policy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little review of these 24 paints. I do have their 36 ones that are in the little stamped pans that uh, you will be seeing very soon as well. And until next time, everyone, take care. Bye now.